Are you struggling to pass the CPA exam? Did your review course fail to fit your learning style? I'm Darius Clark of I-75 CPA Review, the number one course supplement, where the right teacher makes all the difference. I'm on the Facebook groups every day, and the most important topic that everyone says for reg is basis. And candidates ask all the time, what's the difference between stock basis and debt basis? And when it comes to S-Corps, that could be a big deal on the exam. The difference between stock basis and debt basis. Now, this video is a little bit more advanced. It's not for a total beginner. So if you don't know anything about S-Corps, this probably isn't a good video to start with. I have other YouTube videos on S-Corps that are for beginners. But if you're here watching this video, you probably searched for it and you're happy to find it. So let's get into it. So when do you need to know the difference between stock basis and debt basis? Well, it comes into play when determining how much pass-through loss is deductible by the shareholder. There's an S-Corp loss and they ask you how much loss can be deducted by that S-Corp shareholder. Or it might come up where there's a distribution to an S-Corp shareholder, and they ask you how much of that distribution is taxable to the shareholder of the S-Corp. So we're gonna start with number one here, and we're gonna focus on how much pass-through loss is deductible by the shareholder when they give us the stock basis and the debt basis. So we're gonna start with number one. All right, let's start with this. Taxpayer Ann is a 25% shareholder in an S-Corp, her distributive share of loss for year 21 is $20,000. Her basis in the S-Corp stock is $13,000. Okay, that's her stock basis. Her basis in the S-Corp stock is $13,000. Not including a loan that she made to the S-Corp back in year 17 for $5,000. So that $5,000 is her debt basis. And what do they want to know? How much loss is deductible by Ann? in year 21 on form 1040. So the S Corp had a loss. Her share of the loss is 20,000, but her basis, her total tax basis is 13,000 stock basis plus 5,000 debt basis. So her total tax basis is 18,000. Can she use all 18,000 and deduct that much loss in year 21? since her share of the loss is 20,000. Can she deduct 18,000? She can't deduct all 20,000 because she doesn't have enough tax basis. Her stock basis is 13,000, her debt basis is 5,000. Do we combine the stock basis of 13,000 and the loan basis of 5,000 to allow her an $18,000 loss deduction in year 21? Can we do it? Can we say 18,000 is deductible by Ann in year 21? Yes, 18,000 is deductible by Ann in year 21. The other 2,000 of the 20,000 total loss, that's gonna carry over to her to year 22 or until there's enough basis to absorb the loss. We took her stock basis of 13,000, we added her debt basis of 5,000, and that equals her total tax basis of 18,000 because loans made to the S Corp by the shareholder, in this case $5,000, increases her total tax basis for the purposes of deducting a pass-through loss. So we had a $20,000 pass-through loss. We wanted to know how much of that loss Ann could deduct in year 21. We always use stock basis first, 13,000, and then we use loan basis to give her the maximum loss deduction of 18,000. And notice when we do that, she has no basis remaining. She has no stock basis remaining and no debt basis remaining. We used all the 13,000 of stock basis and then we used all 5,000 of loan slash debt basis. So she has no debt basis remaining. She has no stock basis remaining. And you'll see why that's important when we get to this question. Question two. So same facts. Taxpayer Ann's a 25% shareholder in an S Corp. Her distributive share of loss for year 21 is 20,000. Her basis in the S Corp stock is 13,000. That's her stock basis, remember? Not including a loan that she made to the S Corp in year 17 
for $5,000. So all that's the same. Question one asked, how much loss is deductible by Ann in year 21 on her 1040? And we said 13,000 stock basis, that goes first. And then 5,000 of debt basis, total of 18,000 loss deduction in year 21. And she has no basis remaining in the stock or the debt going into year 22. Now here's the new facts. Here's the new part. Assume that early in year 22, Ann gets paid back 4,000 of the $5,000 loan that she had made to the S Corp. How much of that $4,000 loan repayment is taxable to Ann in year 22? And what happened in year 21 is very important because we used up Ann's debt basis. Did we use all of it? Did we use all $5,000 of debt basis back in year 21 to absorb that big loss? Yes. We gave her an $18,000 loss deduction in year 21 by allowing her to take her $5,000 debt basis and add it to the 13,000 stock basis. So she has no loan basis left. In year 22, when they give her that $4,000 loan repayment, it's all gonna be taxable, all 4,000 as a capital gain in year 22 because there's no debt basis. Because Ann used all that basis from the loan in year 21 to take that $18,000 loss, she has no loan basis remaining in year 22. So all 4,000 repaid to Ann is gonna be taxable to her on Form 1040 as a capital gain. It's gonna be treated like this, proceeds of $4,000 minus debt basis of zero equals a $4,000 capital gain. And if she would have gotten all $5,000 back that was owed to her, it would have been a $5,000 capital gain. So let's say in year 23, she gets that last $1,000 paid back to her from that debt, because remember she had a $5,000 loan and she's got 4,000 back now. If she gets the other $1,000 in year 23, she'll have a $1,000 capital gain in year 23. Let's try this. Harris Corp, an S Corp since inception, incurred losses totaling 60,000 in year 22. Its sole shareholder, Brett, had a stock basis of 40,000 and debt with a basis of 15,000 from a shareholder loan. What do they want to know? How much of the $60,000 loss is allowable to Brett as a tax deduction in year 22? And if you think you know the answer, let me know in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps the channel out a lot. And if you want to know more about tax basis versus debt basis or any part of the CPA reg exam, go to cpaexamtutoring.com and get yourself on I-75 where the right teacher makes all the difference.